One problem with studying active volcanoes is that there's a very large part of them beneath the surface, their plumbing system, which you can't see. Mount Erebus volcano in Antarctica is special because it has an active lava lake. The thing about an active lava lake is that it shows there's some kind of connection between the surface and the magma source, and that connection is functioning, so you have magma moving up this conduit and sinking back down, and it allows the gases to escape at the top without losing much magma from the system. Erebus also has occasional bubble burst explosions, so we can see the transition from quiet to explosive behaviour. But we still don't know what's happening beneath the surface, so we have to come up with ways of finding out what's happening down there. Every year a group of scientists heads out to the volcano for a few weeks with a whole lot of different instruments to measure how the volcano works. For the last two field seasons, I was lucky enough to go along to collect some volcanic gas data as part of my PhD. We spent some time there training and putting our gear together. We learned how to drive snowmobiles and survival skills like setting up a tent and digging a snow trench to sleep in. The instrument I use is called a Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrometer. We set it up on the edge of the volcanic crater and it measures infrared radiation from a source somewhere on the other side of the plume. Before the infrared radiation reaches the spectrometer, it has to pass through all of the gases in the volcanic plume and those gases absorb some of the radiation. So the energy spectrum that we measure has lines missing from it where some of the radiation has been absorbed. Different gases have different absorption patterns, so just by looking at what we measure we can figure out which gases are present in the plume, but when we add in computer modelling we can also start to find out how much of each gas there is. So what's the point of finding out how much of each gas is coming from the volcano? Well, you can make some observations connecting the surface activity of the lava lake to the gas measurements. So when we get these big bubble burst explosions, the amount of carbon dioxide that comes out compared to the amount of carbon monoxide suddenly shoots up. Sometimes we see cyclic increases in the amounts of sun gases compared to others, and these match up to times when the lake starts to move faster and put out more heat. And because we've got measurements from every field season since 2004, we can also start to see how the lake changes from year to year. But that doesn't help us with our first problem. We still need to find out what's happening beneath the surface. So let's start with a bottle of soda. You can't see any gas bubbles in it to start with. And then you take off the lid and release the pressure. And suddenly, bubbles appear. That's because there's carbon dioxide dissolved in the water. And when the pressure drops, it's coming out of solution and turning into a gas. When magma is deep underground and under pressure, it has something called volatiles dissolved in it. A volatile is something that easily forms a gas. So it's got all these different types of volatiles in the magma, and as the magma rises, they start to form a gas, a lot like the carbon dioxide in this bottle. What does this mean? Well, for my work, this is useful because the gases in the plume can tell us where they came from, whether that's deep down or just tens of metres down. On its own, the information we can get from the infrared spectrometer is interesting. But its real strength is that these gases are like messengers from deep beneath the volcano.